Thanks for tuning in. I'm at the East ISDE Qualifier Series in Plantersville, Alabama on May 29th, 2021. ISDE stands for International Six Days of Enduro, and that race is scheduled for late August and early September 2021 in Italy. There are six of these qualifier races in the United States, and the purpose of these qualifiers is to select seven three-member U.S. club teams to compete alongside the three U.S. ISDE World Trophy teams. These riders will then represent the United States and Italy at the International Six Days of Enduro. Riders who are competing to qualify for the ISDE are referred to as intent riders or LOI riders and are grouped together and go first at each test. After that, other riders who are not competing to qualify for the ISDE can join in several other classes for the race. I'm in the latter group and I'm racing in the C40 Plus class today. This is a sprint enduro format with two separate courses or tests. The first one is a cross test and starts out on this amazing grass track that you've been seeing. The second course or test is the enduro test which is a more tight technical course. We'll run each test three times for a total of six time sessions and as usual the lowest cumulative time wins. I'm riding my 2021 Yamaha YZ250 FX and conditions couldn't be better for the race today. We had some much needed rain the night before and temperatures are very mild for late May with highs in the 70s. trying to get the feel for my bike here in the early part of this test. I wasn't able to ride the weekend before so it's been two weeks since the last road and I made some changes to my handlebar setup since my last ride. I don't like to make changes to my bike without a chance to test between races but in this case my hands were going numb with the previous bar setup so I needed to do something different. I ordered some different bars but those haven't come in yet so I moved my mounts up to the upper mounting location on the triple clamps and then turned the mounts 180 degrees so effectively moving the bars about a half inch farther away and up just a quarter inch or so. I don't have this problem on my other bike so I'm hoping this will help with my hands going numb during races. After about a mile of grass track this course heads into the woods to complete the four mile loop and I almost missed that hard right turn. I'll be running this loop a total of three times, so the more I can memorize about it, the better. While this qualifier is listed under Perry Mountain, it's actually located at some private property just down the road from Perry Mountain. I've been here once before for a fun run, and I'm remembering just how awesome this place is with burned up turns and outstanding single track. Feeling the best I've ever felt today on the YZ250FX. I think changing the bar position was one of the last pieces of the puzzle for getting the bike set up to my liking, and I've adjusted more to the four stroke as well as far as my riding style goes. I feel like I'm riding well and riding smooth so far as I pass the two mile mark on this test. As I finish out the test, I'm feeling great and I'm not feeling any fatigue in my hands, so that's really good. At the end of the first test, I'm in third place in my class with a time of 13 minutes, two seconds. I'm about 16 seconds behind my friend Craig Chapel, three seconds behind Ted, and less than one second ahead of Trent. After a quick break at the truck, it's on to the enduro test. This test is a little more technical than the first test, but it's about the same length, about four miles.
this is kind of a left hand uphill turn and there's a route that runs parallel with the trail right where you need to make that left cut. There's a hot line to the left before you get to this spot and I need to try to remember that for the next time through. I only lost a few seconds there though. Despite that one fall, I had the fastest time in my class for that test at 14 minutes, 11 seconds. I moved up to second place only one second behind Craig. One cool thing about sprint enduros is you typically have 10 to 15 minutes between tests to go back to the pits and take a break. Several of the guys on this list were parked right next to me and we had fun checking the live timing after each loop. Here we go on cross test loop two. Once again, I put down the best time in my class with a 12 minute, 24 second time. I moved up to first with about a 13 second lead. <laughs> now it's time for my second loop on the enduro test. Up, I just need to keep up my same pace and try to extend my lead. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. Man, I'm wishing I'd ride. I might be still riding when the sun goes down. I don't blame you. This place <laughs> is heaven on earth. Yeah, it is. Close to that left turn with the parallel route that got me on my first time around this test. I'm trying to make sure that I take the line to the left before I get there, and that caused me to take a couple of bad lines to the left before I got there. Here it is, I was able to take the better line to the left. I'm feeling a little fatigued at this point in the race, but that's normal. I just need to keep pushing forward. Can't afford any mistakes at this point. I think seeing that tree caused me to be a little farther left than I should have been. I cracked it a little too late and I was on top of the berm. My front tire just washed out over the berm. As I'm editing this video, I can tell you that the fall cracked a rib on my right side and fractured my right pinky finger. In the moment, I knew I hit my ribs pretty hard, but I was just worried about losing time and needed to get going again. At this point, I didn't yet realize my hand was hurt. I really don't know what happened to my pinky finger. Here I put my hand out as I was falling and maybe I rolled on it, not really sure. I lost about 21 seconds there from the time I went down to when I got going again. and my hands hurt. The rider behind me caught me at this point. I'm going to let him by. That's Samuel Chapel, Craig's son. So I'll fall in behind him and I'll fall in for the rest of this test.
Craig beat my time by about 18 seconds on that test and he's back in first. I'm about five seconds behind him now. Yeah, I crashed hard. <laughs> I knew something happened. Yeah, I'm afraid I broke a finger. Oh, really? I accidentally left my camera on back at the pits while trying to figure out where I'm injured. I think I broke a finger. Uh-uh. On the tree? No, on the ground. I heard it. I don't know if it's broken or not. I mean, it's not obviously broke. Here I am checking the live lapse times to see where we stand. <clears throat> you got me by four seconds, Craig. Huh? You got me by four seconds now. What if I put duct tape on it if it'll come back off? I didn't have any athletic tape, so I duct taped my finger to stabilize it a little bit. <laughs> now I dug myself a hole being five seconds behind, adding a couple of injuries with two tests left to run. I just need to ignore the pain and finish strong on these last two tests. Hey, do you want to know what was more painful than the last two loops of this race? Editing this video. That's right, it probably took me a couple of thousand clicks with an injured hand to get it done, but you'll only need to click once to like the video. Go ahead and do that now before you forget. It really helps get my videos out to more people on YouTube. Thank you. I really think this race helped me improve my grass track turns. I was much smoother in these turns in this last loop. Kent Farmer took that photo for me, thank you sir. I was able to ride mistake free for the third loop on a cross test and once again had the best time in my class with a time of 12 minutes 43 seconds. I'm back in first place with a four second lead on Craig. This is my third loop on the enduro test and it's my last loop for the day. I need to maintain my four second lead to win so I need to ride smooth and mistake free. Despite the injuries, I don't feel like it slowed me down. This course got really rough, but I was able to focus and ride smooth. Here's the spot where I wrecked. That's my friend Chad Gray. He shared this video with me. Thank you, Chad. I had a 14 minute, two second lap. And Craig was one and a half seconds faster, but I was able to hang on to first by just three seconds. Craig and I had a great battle going on all day and it was a ton of fun. Congratulations to Craig and Jake on second and third. This is only my second win since I started racing in 2018. My last win was in June of 2019 and that was also a sprint enduro. I'd like to say thanks to Max Motorsports for their continued support of this channel and thanks to Steve at Fast Lap Racing Suspension for getting my YZ250FX suspension dialed in for me. Big thanks to the SEALS family for hosting this event on their property and for all the work they put in to make it near perfect. That was a fun race. Thanks to all the volunteers that made it happen, and thank you to the Perry Mountain Motorcycle Club for organizing and scoring the event. If you like these race recap videos and want to see more like them, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.